Welcome to Somerville Community Access Television. We have a special live lunch cast today. Uh, sorry to interrupt the Tom Hartman show. He will be back <laughs> tomorrow um, and at 12.30, actually. Um, I'm here with Ben and Brielle from the Greater Somerville Homeless Coalition. Welcome to you both. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Uh, the point of these live lunch casts is to highlight some uh, nonprofits and um, communities that do greater good during this giving season. Um, and I'd like to uh, give you all the opportunity to talk about you know, what it is, how people can donate to the Greater Somerville Homeless Coalition and maybe some of the things that you're, you're working on. Um, and who'd like to start off? Awesome. Um, I can start by giving you kind of a broad overview of what our organization does. Sure. Um, and then Ben can give a little bit more detail on our Project Soup program. Um, so the Somerville Homeless Coalition has quite a few programs. We offer shelter here in Somerville. So we have a family shelter as well as an individual sh shelter um, for those who are homeless. And then we also have a housing program. Um, and that houses people who are homeless and disabled. And it keeps them in long-term supported housing. Um, we also have a coordinated entry program to help people who are currently homeless in finding housing. And then we have Project Soup, um, which Ben can talk a little bit more about as well. Um, so we kind of work with clients throughout all the phases of homelessness, mm -hmm. making sure that they're accessing all of the support and services that they, they need. And we were talking with, with Matthew, Matthew Cahey from uh, Greater Somerville Homeless Coalition, who you all work with, um, that winter is a crucial time um, for, for your services for a lot of people. It absolutely is. You know, as it gets colder outside, people are more in need of shelter. Um, and during the giving season, people tend to be more inclined to donate for services and causes. Um, but, you know, we're always looking for support year round, especially at Project Soup. Mm. So why don't we talk about Project Soup? Sure. Um, what does that in entail? Um, so Project Soup is primarily a food pantry. Uh, we also do have weekly meals. Um, and um, basically it's just, um, we serve about 500 families a month, um, which is about you know, more than 1,600 people. And we give about uh, 1,700 bags of food away uh, per month. And the way that it works is uh, people come to our pantry. Um, they prove that they live in Somerville or if they, they're homeless, um, then we can help them as well. And then um, they come around the pantry with us. And I, I think that's somewhat of an unusual thing for a food pantry. Um, oftentimes they're just bags provided that are sort of pre-packed. Yeah. Uh, we like to really get to know people. We like to help people figure out, you know, what they can do with certain ingredients that they might not be familiar with and to help people feel comfortable. Um, and like we're you know, a trusted source and there's all sorts of things going on these days with public charge. And I think there's a little bit of um, discomfort sometimes um, mm. with, you know, providing information about yourself. Yeah. Um, and so that's what we do is we do our best to make people at ease and obviously to feed hungry mouths. That sounds like a real um, important way to, to humanize a situation. Like you, like you say, you know, having bags at the ready to go isn't the same as taking somebody around the food pantry to maybe see what works for them personally. So that, that's really amazing that you all do that. Thanks, yeah. I think the, the acknowledgement of, you know, that people have preferences in spite of the fact that they might, you know, be dealing with this food insecurity and need our support that they, you know, they're, they're a person with their own cultural and personal preferences, and um, we, we have to respect that. And have you seen those, those numbers go up at all in, in the past year? In the past year, we have. Um, actually, the past two years has been more of a significant growth. I mm. think um, over 200 more households were serving, so we went from um, probably around 300 to now over 500. Um, and over the last year, more, more like 100. Um, so yeah, I guess 100 additional households um, per year uh, in the last two years, which is so significant. Mm. Um, we do know that most of our clients are based in a very uh, specific area, um, actually out of East Somerville, um, which is where we are. Yeah. Um, you know, I think a big part of the reason for that just being word of mouth and um, access to transportation. And uh, you know, a lot of people just don't have a car, so they have to walk to us. And that sort of limits our uh, capacity to, to help people in different areas. But, yeah. Um, yeah, so we just really serve the, the East Somerville community. And are there any like specific things that you all do around this time of year to get ready for those increased numbers? At the pantry, <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, fortunately, again, people like to give um, during the holiday season. And so um, that's just, you know, a huge 
a huge benefit to us. It's, um, it's incredible. This time of year, we tend to have um, more than just food, a lot of toiletries, um, toothbrushes, toothpaste, soap, shampoo, which again, if you are interested in donating, these are the items that we could use the most. Um, they're some of the few things that we can't otherwise get um, outside of your donations. So um, those are so much appreciated and yeah. Great. Yeah, we've also been kind of increasing our efforts in outreach. Um, so kind of back on the shelter program, our shelters are at capacity year round. Um, so both our family shelter and our adult shelter. Um, but recently we've been able to grow our outreach program so that we have case managers who can go onto the street and interact with people who are street homeless, mm -hmm. um, whether they're staying at other shelters in the area or at the warming center in Cambridge. Um, so that they're still able to access services. You know, we can connect them to food pantries and other resources like that, um, as well as help them start the housing search process even before they're in a shelter. Yeah. Yeah. And so is there a lot of collaboration between different organizations? You mentioned the, the Cambridge Warming Center. Is there a lot of Yeah, there's a lot of collaboration them? with organizations kind of in Arlington, Somerville, and Cambridge. Um, we actually have a couple of different provider groups that meet on a weekly or biweekly basis to coordinate those resources. Um, there's an outreach team that goes to Cambridge, Arlington, and Somerville. Um, and then, again, for our other programs, we work with CAS, we work with RESPOND, um, just to start a lot of the organizations kind of in the area because we all have very similar goals um, and if we're able to support each other better then it's you know more helpful for our clients yeah yeah so let's talk about uh, donations and other way that people can help um, you mentioned the the donation of certain items um, there's also the dir the direct cash or credit card donation. Um, what's, what's the best way for people to, to make those? Yeah, so um, people can go onto our website, it's SomervilleHomelessCoalition.org, um, and there's a donate page there and they can make a monetary donation. Um, you have the option to select a program to donate it to or you can make a general donation. Mm -hmm. And that supports kind of a variety of needs. Um, yeah. You know, we receive funding from federal sources and state sources as well as local grants. Um, however, most funding comes in with very strict eligibility requirements. Um, and what we do is comprehensive and you know we need funding for things that those grants aren't gonna cover. Um, so for example, if somebody needs a copy of their birth certificate or they need a state ID, mm. those are requirements to get housed. But none of those funding sources are willing to pay for that. Um, so that's where the donations are really important to us. If we're able to kind of fundraise those additional funds, we're able to provide that extra level of support to get people into housing. So it's like filling that gap. Exactly. Or what, what the grant uh, and, and your other sources of funding uh, are tied to, you know, your hands are tied with that. Exactly. And so you need to fill the gap often. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so uh, if, if somebody does need your resources uh, as a homeless person mm -hmm. or as somebody who has seen, who needs to fill in their own wage gap, um, yeah. you know, how can they reach out to you? So there are a couple options. Um, if they're looking for direct support through Project Soup, they can go to the Project Soup location over in East Somerville. Um, the address is... 165 Broadway. Um, and then they also could come into our main office. We're at 1 Davis Square, so we're actually in the basement of the CVS and BSC building. Mm -hmm. um, if they come in and walk in, we can provide them with kind of the referral information, the application packet, to determine kind of what we can do to help, depending on what their needs are. Yeah. Um, there's also a referral form on our website. Under any of the program pages, you can click the referral link, and you can provide, again, that basic information, and somebody will reach out to you to connect um, and see what we can do to help. And are there any volunteer opportunities? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. particularly with Project Soup, we're always looking for people that are available during the week. Um, mm -hmm. You know, our hours can be a little bit trying um, for, for folks that work nine to five jobs, um, but our hours are online. Um, you can find it on either the Somerville Homeless Coalition website or um, Google Project Soup, or Project Soup Somerville. Um, and during the week, in particular, we're always looking for more volunteers. We're always needing help, especially around the holidays when things do, you know, we are getting a lot of donations that we need to sort through. Um, and we are, you know, people are, there's a, a higher need uh, in the community. So we're always looking for volunteers, particularly for the pantry. But we do have our Monday dinners as well. Um, those are in West Somerville mm -hmm. um, at Col on College Ave at the First Church. Um, I think that's 89 College Ave. And then... Um, we also have monthly dinners where we collaborate with the Somerville Food Security Coalition, um, and we could always use volunteers for that as well. That's the fourth Thursday of every month. 
And the Monday dinner, do you need people helping to prepare the meal or to just uh, help s serve the meal? <laughs> yeah. Pretty much all of that. <laughs> we do have some pretty regular volunteers that help serve meals. We yeah. are looking for groups that would be interested in cooking for us. Um, and so that could just be, you know, um, a restaurant, uh, a hotel are some examples of people that we work with currently. We work with uh, Lamplighter, we work with Row Hotel, mm. um, we've worked with um, many other places in the past. Dave's Fresh Pasta I think we worked with at one point. Um, yeah. But any group really, if a large group of friends, if you wanted to get in touch with us and you know make a dinner for like 25 to 30 people, then we're open to that as well. So um, there's lots of ways to help. That sounds like a good opportunity for a business partner to, to come in and, and help you all out with that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Great. Um, and uh, in the last few moments that we have here, um, is, there any, is there anything else you'd like to add about, about the good that you all do? And, um, you know, I think the work that we do is never ending. Yeah. Um, the homelessness rate is increasing. Mm. Affordable housing is decreasing in Somerville. Um, we are all aware of that. Housing is very expensive. Um, so the more support that we are able to receive from the community just means that we're able to help people stay here. Um, there are a lot of families that have lived here for a very long time and this community is their home yeah. and they are being forced out by increased rental rates um, or tragedy and trauma and things that the family themselves are dealing with. Um, so the more support that we receive from the community, the more we're able to give back and keep our community members here and local. Um, and I think that's something that's really important to people who live in Somerville. Yeah, that's that's great. And trying to keep people within Somerville that, you know, for whatever reason, you know, they moved here, they're longtime Somervillians, for whatever reason, Somerville's their home, mm -hmm. and they want to stay here. So it's, it's really wonderful that you all are working to, to keep people in Somerville and keep them fed and fill in gaps of food security. Um, yeah, that's, that's amazing work. I could add something if there's a moment. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, I think that, um, you know, despite the fact that, again, there's, you know, a rising need and so many people that need our support, um, we are really fortunate to be in Somerville um, because I think that it's a really great sort of hub of resources and people that are concerned, um, you know, people that can make a difference and want to make a difference. Um, great organizations that we can collaborate like CAS um, with Project Soup. We also collaborate with Food for Free, 11 Spoonfuls, lots of food rescues, um, along with Shape Up Somerville, which is the health and human services part of, um, it's part of the Somerville city. Um, yeah. And um, the fact that all these people are coming together, there's a lot of volunteer opportunities out there. There's a lot of different ways that you can help if you're interested in supporting people in a certain way. So feel, please reach out to um, any of these local organizations that are doing really great work. And um, yeah, thank you for having us. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, yeah, we appreciate you, you coming on and uh, highlighting the work that Greater Somerville Homeless Coalition does. Um, and once again, if you wanna plug the website in the last few moments that we have here just to yeah. uh, uh, so our website is the Somerville Homeless Coalition org and you can donate on the website find out more about volunteer opportunities as well as be referred to the programs and the services that we offer very very nice yeah and uh, do you all have any sort of um, holiday oriented plans for yourselves <laughs> <laughs> in the last few moments um, I have lots of family in the area, actually. That's great. Um, so it's going to be really good. Had an awesome Thanksgiving. We'll have an awesome Christmas, Hanukkah, whatever. Everything. <laughs> uh, everything. That's yeah. great. Yeah, we're helping our, all of our families prep for the holidays as well. We actually delivered a bunch of Christmas trees this weekend, which was very exciting. Um, the Hope Fellowship Church, which is between Porter and Davis, I think mm -hmm. technically it's in Cambridge. I think um, I see their ads on the buses. Yeah. yeah, they were donating trees. So we were able to deliver those to a lot oh, of our families nice. as well. Yeah. Very nice. So it's been fun. Well, thank you all for, uh, for coming on.